Before we get to this episode, I want to ask you a quick question. Are you a woman who's 50 or older? And are you ready for a career or job change? Maybe you're yearning to do more meaningful work that really lights you up. I'm asking because my friends Dana and Wendy of Camp Reinvention have the coolest career program. It's called the Career Change Accelerator Program, and they coach amazing women in a 12-week program to reimagine what their careers might look like and to help them see new possibilities. Their very cool program is kicking off on October 27th. And if you even have an inkling, I might be ready for something new and different. I invite you to check out the details. There's a link in the show notes and let's get busy and think about new possibilities. I learned so much about myself I learned how to forgive myself. I learned how to forgive others. And I learned how to show myself grace. And thinking of the many iterations of the book and the hours I spent in front of the computer or in front of, you know, with my journal writing, it was just such, it was cathartic, but it was, I just, I just got to learn who I was. And it was really a beautiful process all the way around, even though it was the most difficult thing I've ever done ever in my life. Welcome to Reinvention Revels, stories of brave and unapologetic women, 50 to 90 years young, who have boldly reimagined life on their own terms to find new purpose and possibilities. I'm your host, Wendy Battles. Ready for a dose of inspiration? Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Reinvention Rebels podcast. I'm your host, Wendy, and I'm so excited you are here with me today for what is going to be a fabulous, inspiring, empowering time together with my very special guest, Jill Carlisle. I'm going to introduce her in just a couple of minutes, but I do want to start by asking you, what are the ways that you are leaning into more joy? What are you doing that lights you up? When was the last time you did something that was so fun that you just couldn't get enough of it, that you laughed so hard you were almost crying when you had one of those moments of pure, sheer joy, delight, just being in the moment. I ask you that because I think that when we are interested in reinventing ourselves, when we want to do something new or different, when we're open to new possibilities, one of the things we can clue into is what brings us joy, what makes us happy, what makes us smile a mile wide just by doing that thing. That's often a little breadcrumb that can help you down that path as you begin to figure out, what do I want? What do I want my life to look like? What would it feel like if I was truly happy? What do I need right now? What am I willing to do about it? And as I mentioned before, I think the key thing is that we need to just get started in perfect action. We don't often know all the answers. Sometimes we don't know many of the answers at all, but it's the willingness, the self-permission, the desire that can get us going. And if we're thinking about that and joy, more joy, more happiness, more feeling good in our life, in our bodies, with ourselves. Those are things that can help us figure that out. So let's think about how we can reinvent ourselves in ways that make us feel great. And speaking of feeling great, did you listen to the episode with Francie Jean-Louis? She is so amazing. She is a joy spreader. She is 
all about lifting herself and other people up, lighting the path to help other people shine. It just is a great episode. I loved it so much. And I know you will too. I just love her story. I love how she was an opera singer and reinvented herself in sometimes unexpected ways to end up where she is today. And I think that's a clue also. We don't always have a clear path. Sometimes it's a little circuitous to get to that destination where all things kind of come together in just the right way. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, please give it a listen. I know you're going to love it. And with that, let's get started and let me introduce you to my guest today. What happens when you do a 180 degree pivot? Can it lead to something new and inspiring? Something beyond your wildest dreams? It can and it did for 52 year young reinvention rebel Jill Carlisle. Jill has a compelling reinvention story. When she noticed something was missing, her career in music led her to get her GED at 43 despite the naysayers. From there, she enrolled in her local community college and a few months later attended her first college class. From community college, she was accepted into the University of Central Florida and in 2017 graduated magna cum laude with a BA in English literature. Then she was accepted into grad school at the University of Miami and ultimately went on to finish her MA in English and creative nonfiction writing at Southern New Hampshire University in 2020. In 2022, she was back to grad school and is in the process of earning her MFA in creative fiction writing. Along the way, she also became an adjunct professor. Most importantly, she found her authentic voice in her writing. Writing that gets to the heart of who she is. Writing so powerful that her book, Finding 50, A Memoir of Rising in Midlife, quickly became a bestseller. But that's not all. She's also lifting up the voices of others through her Empowered Press Publishing Company. She wants to bring others' stories into the light as well. Jill is a powerhouse with a bold voice and a passion for helping people uncover their true selves. Jill Carlisle, welcome to the Reinvention Rebels guest chair. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. I am so excited and just so um, honored to be here. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. And I am so excited about our conversation. I do want to tell the audience how we met. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Which was on Instagram. And I'm honestly not sure how I discovered you. I feel like it might have been through Arlene Walker. I, I don't know. You know, what's funny is that something I shared something of yours last year on this day, last year, um, on my Instagram and then it posted on my Facebook and I, it, it popped up in my memories today. Huh. And I thought, how funny is that? So we've been connected for a while. Um, I actually think I found you before you found me and I found your podcast and I loved your podcast. And I started, I, I, I found you on Instagram, started listening to your podcast and just started following you. And I think then you must have followed me back. And then we just started to build a friendship. Yeah. And I love it. And I, I, I know that people complain about social media and they think about all the negative things, but I do think there are amazing good things about it. And the ability to connect to like-minded souls, to find your tribe, to live in totally different states or countries and have a deep connection with someone to me, especially in this world where so many of us are so isolated. Yeah. Just makes my heart so full and happy. Yes. So I'm really thrilled uh, that we're here together today. And I have so many questions to ask you about your extraordinary 
journey, how you've come into the person that you are. And I thought I might start by talking a little bit about what to me is so amazing that you got your GED at 43 when it would it would have been easy to just keep going as you were. So I want to start by asking you what motivated you to reinvent yourself and get your degree at that age? Well, my children were graduating from high school and um, I raised them as a single mother and um, I was a working musician and just never had the time to devote to um, my education. And so I always knew that eventually one day I would get my GED and I had always hoped to go to college after that. So it had always been in the back of my mind. But really to answer that question, it was the idea that I could be more, um, that I could do more. And uh, the knowing that I could make a difference, um, not just in my life, but um, in my children's lives, um, and also in the lives lives of other women, um, women who have had been through or have been through or were going through or are going through similar trauma um, that grew up centered and surrounded in shame from, you know, a, a, a very dysfunctional upbringing, which is what I went through and the, and ultimately dealt with a lot of trauma from my childhood, but my faith and the, um, the idea of hope that I never lost is what ultimately motivated me to keep moving forward in my life. And I really felt like the second half of my life would be the time that I would shine. I think that's so interesting. You mentioned faith and hope, but I also heard you say at the beginning that you had this knowing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so often we feel uncertain or unsure, but sometimes we get to that space where you just have this feeling that's so strong that I know that this path is right for me, or I know what I'm meant to be doing. How did that how did that un unfold for you that you, you got to this place of knowing this is what was next for you? Well, I think what, what got me to that place was um, kind of backing up about a year before that, before the time that I really decided to go get my GED. I really, my life was, to me, was very spinning out of control. And um, I was 42. I hadn't yet met my now husband. Um, and I had just been through relationship after relationship, failed relationships, failed familial, familial relationships. And, um, I just felt lost and I, what I do is, you know, I, I prayed and I, I just prayed and I, you know, I gave it to my God and I just said, whatever it is that I'm supposed to do with my life, I'm trusting that you will lead me there. And at that moment, that was, and I write about that in my book, that pivotal moment, that was a pivotal moment in my life that I will never forget. And that was the turning point. And that was when I gave it up. I gave it all up. And I just said, I know that I can be more. Mm -hmm. And I just trusted that I could. And things shifted immediately. It was the strangest thing. But it was like when I gave it up and I finally said, I know I can be more. I can do more. And it might take me a while to get it done, but there's time and there's hope in that time. And that hope and that time gave me the knowing to move forward and the confidence and the empowerment. I love that. The hope, the time, you just had that sense that you could do it. And I really love what you said about trust, like trusting yourself, because I think that sometimes midlife women, women generally, but midlife women, especially because we often have gone through a lot of transitions with our kids leaving or perhaps 
getting divorced, a spouse dying. I mean, it could be any, anything. really anything, a job yeah. ending, any of those things that I think take us off our access or the direction in which we're heading in sometimes unexpected ways do a lot, I think, to shatter sometimes our trust, our trust in ourselves. They do. And I also think too that, you know, the social construct, especially from like our generation, where we're coming out of that generation of kind of that um, all American dream or, you know, where women, women are home, they take care of the kids. And then when the kids leave, it's kind of like, you know, after 50, you're supposed to be kind of planning your you're buying your cemetery plots and life gets right and you cut right. your hair short and let it go gray or whatever. And that's like the rule. That's like, and that's a metaphor for like that social construct of what society was telling maybe our mothers, what they could be, that what they are. And I think that our generation is starting to come out of that and lead kind of the trajectory for the next generations to say, no, that's not what 50 is. And I knew when I looked kind of back at my family, I said, I don't want to be that because I want, I, you know, I, I know so much more. I can make my own choices. I can make my own decisions. I got my kids through school and now it's my time. And, and I'm here in world. Hello world. I'm here. Yeah, you're here and you're doing such amazing things. Oh, thank you. So I I love that you leaned in, you listened, you built that self-trust and you had that certainty, which I think is so key to anything we do. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's big or small, right? It could be right. just getting back into exercise and believing that you can do it. Or it could be yes. moving halfway around the world and believing you can do it. I don't think it matters what the thing is. I right. think it's, it's just the thing. It's the thing, right? It's and the it, knowing. It's, it's the, the knowing, knowing of the thing at yeah. the end of the day, really. And and the the confidence. And sometimes we lose we, we lose ourselves and we lose our confidence. And for me, it was a little different because I was a single mom and I knew that once my kids were out of high school, that part of my life was over. Not over, but it I was, you know, was moving into like the second half of my life. Yeah. And I knew that at that time, that then I was going to be able to devote that time to reinventing myself and resetting myself. And so I couldn't wait. Like I, I couldn't wait. I mean, I was scared to death. I was, I was scared to death because I didn't, there was a part of me that didn't, that knew I wanted to do it, but I almost didn't believe that I could do it. So I had to prove to myself that I could. And so much of my life was centered in shame, the shame of not graduating from high school. That was the biggest shame that I lived with. And I, nobody really knew that I hadn't graduated from high school. And my mom and dad had always said, don't embarrass yourself. Don't tell anyone. Don't ever tell anyone you didn't graduate from high school. No one will accept you. It, you'll everyone will call you a loser. And so when you're, when you've grown up around that, that's what you believe about yourself. So I, I went and I got my GED. I told no one I was doing it. I studied and studied and studied and I passed it. And when I got the letter that said I passed it and I had to go back and take the math over again, I'm not very good at math. I'm a, I'm a writer, but I went and took that over again. And when I finally got it, it said, you have earned your high school diploma. I said to myself, I got to the starting line. The possibilities are endless. What can I do with this? Two weeks later, I went and I applied at the community college and I got in and I started seeing that I was not just an average student, I was excelling. And that really created momentum. And it it just helped me find the courage to keep going and keep reaching. I thought I'd get my two-year degree and that would be it. But I got the two-year degree. And then I was like, no, I'm going to go get the four-year degree. Now I'm going to go get the master's degree. And wait a minute, now I'm going to go get another master's degree. And so inside of 10 years, I've I've earned almost five degrees. So fabulous. It's And it's very inspiring. And what, what I like best about the story you just told me, one is that you were able to overcome this situation of shame 
And I think that we all have things in our lives when we get to a certain age, you know, in our fifties or beyond where, you know, sometimes that we still have those stories in our head about those things, but you one demonstrate, they don't have to define us and we can change. That's right. But what I also like is how you took that small step, which is really is a big step to get your GED. That's a big step, but it how is. you took that accomplishment and then you built on it. You didn't say, I'm going to get, you didn't just start on say, I'm going to get five degrees. Right. I'm going to like overwhelm myself. You just said, okay, I'm going to start here. Yeah. And then you got there and you said, now I'm going to move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very instructive for us to hear about the how, that the how can be, I'm going to start here and I'm just going to get started. Yes. And that is key. It's getting started, getting to the starting line and not overwhelming yourself. And and, and there's a lot of truth in that because we can have all these grand plans. We can overwhelm ourselves to a point where then we hit a hit the wall of fear. So if we take baby steps and we start at the first step, we move forward a few steps and then we go, okay, what's the next one? And we get to the next one. I just never wanted to plateau. And I knew, I knew, you know, it was, it was crazy because really I truly thought I'm only going to get this two-year degree. And now 10 years later, I'm actually on my third master's degree. So, but it wasn't what I started out doing. I had to build trust within myself. And that's how I built the trust by taking small, actionable steps that were doable so that I didn't set myself up for failure. I set myself up for success. And if I could give anybody any, you know, just a little piece of advice, it would be take those actionable small steps and set yourself up for success. And then instead of plateauing, unless you're, you're unless you get to the point where you're super satisfied and then that plateau is fine because you've reached the pinnacle. But if not, just know that then you take the next actionable step, whatever that is. That is so right on. That is so, such great wisdom. Because I think that we can overwhelm ourselves with this idea, like I want to reinvent myself. I want to somehow create something new. And sometimes it gets bigger than we are, right? It just kind of, as you said, could overwhelm us. So I right. love baby steps, you know, one, just chunk it out one step at a time, build on that. Because the only yeah. thing that's really stopping us is us. The only thing that's really that's pressuring it. us is us, right? That's and right. so I think we so easily get in our own way, no matter, like I do this all the time. Right. I'm getting better, but I can sometimes, like no one else is saying, well, Wendy, really? I, yeah, right. No one is saying that except right. me sometimes. So, right. right. And we're the ones that do that to ourselves. And I mean, I've had to learn because I get overzealous. Like I get really excited. Me and, too. Woo, you know, this is, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And oh do yeah. And I'm like, Jill, step back. And I think sometimes I even get that way with social media because social media can be that way too. Like we can get oversaturated and see yeah. this and look what this person's doing and look what that person's doing. And I think for me, that's been a really good example of still taking a step back, taking a deep breath and just doing me you know, doing me. That, that really is the essence of it is doing you, doing me, doing what is natural for us, where we shine, because, you know, we can all look at it. It doesn't matter who we are, whether a midlife woman or not, we could all look around on social media, in our workplace, in our oh. families and get very stuck on. And I know for any of us in any day, that could be us, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Get really stuck on, I'm not enough, or I'm not this, or I see this person who's doing amazing things. And I wish I was doing that too. Or how come I'm not enough? Instead of leaning into, there is something that we all shine at. All of us every single person. And I think that that's one of the things with my message and my story that I want to encourage other women to do is that let's figure out what, where you shine, because we all have that shiny surface. It just takes some varnish sometimes, you know? Yeah. It does. Yeah. 
And, you know, you polish something. Sometimes you have to polish really hard, right? You have to Absolutely. really work at it, right? So it's not always like, oh, I'm just going to kind of quickly exactly. go over it and it's revealed. But I think so much of what we're talking about is doing often this deep personal development work. Yes. The, right. The willingness to be open to ourselves, to really lean into our emotions and tune into what's going on, where I know that I can get busy and just run around. Right. And do less of that, but I have to really be intentional. And I love this path that you've taken. I love how you've done that. That's such a great example of it. I am curious about kind of thinking about your whole reinvention journey and all the different things that you've gone through over the last 10 years. What has been most surprising Mm -hmm. for you about what you've done and accomplished? Uh, I think... Somebody asked me sort of the same question one time and they asked me what, what's been most surprising. And that's, you know, kind of what you're asking. What's been most surprising about this whole process. And for me, what's been most surprising, especially writing my book, um, I started writing my book broken. I didn't think I was broken. I thought I was pretty okay. I started writing my book broken and I finished whole. And throughout the process of writing Finding 50, I feel like I went from a one-dimensional person to three dimensions. And I reintroduced me to myself. And I realized that I could do anything that I put my mind to. Because as I went, as I've kind of traveled through my educational journey, You know, it's been one thing, then the next, then the next, then the next, which has been great. But I never really was able to kind of stop and reflect on it and say, wow, look what I just accomplished. And when I finished my book and I published my book and it was up on Amazon, I sat back and I, I just said, "I, I can do anything I put my mind to anything. Look what I've accomplished. And that that's really what I think has shocked and surprised me the most is that I've done the things that I've put my mind to. Yeah. And it's powerful. Our mind is really powerful too. It is. I mean, it really has such influence over what we think we can do and what we can achieve as exemplified by Wow, I did this because I one of the things I like that you said is that you paused. I think that so often we're going, 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 doing, doing, doing. We're not spending so much time being or reflecting or right. getting quiet and and appreciating ourselves. Like that, you did a lot. This is like a big deal. How you yeah. have truly, as you said, transformed your life in such powerful ways. And to actually soak that in, you know, to soak it up, to pause and reflect and enjoy the moment and not Mm -hmm. just be moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Because you're clearly a very capable person, but I appreciate how mindful you are about this and like leaning into this. Because I think that that's part of the joy of life, right? It's not just doing all this stuff. It it is. And I've learned how to enjoy and appreciate life a lot more through this process. Getting the degrees have been wonderful, but writing the book, writing my story, telling my story was the pinnacle. And it took me four years to write the book um, because it was very tough. It was a very, very difficult book to write because memoir is always tough, especially when you're writing about trauma. You have to go back and sit in those spaces. And and it's uncomfortable and you have to write about dialogue and you have to think about other people when you're writing um, because they're, they're, you know, your story isn't just you. Other people help you make, help make up that story. And, and so I learned, I just learned so much. I learned so much about myself. I learned how to forgive myself. I learned how to forgive others. And I learned how to show myself grace and thinking of the many iterations of the book 
and the hours I spent in front of the computer or in front of, you know, with my journal writing, it was just such, it was cathartic, but it was, I just, I just got to learn who I was and it was really a beautiful process all the way around, even though it was the most difficult thing I've ever done ever in my life. And it wasn't just the act of writing it. It was, you know, it wasn't just writing it, I should say. It was the act of writing it, you know, the sitting in those spaces, the revisiting, the um, coming face to face with my past, you know, a past that I, a lot of times I'm not proud of. Um, but knowing that I can take, you know, I, I, I always say, you know, the foundation, the, the, the failures of my past have become the foundation for my future. I know. Social media, it gets such a bad rap. You might be thinking, I am so done with it. Or, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But what if that was a place you could find community? What if you could find like-minded people interested in reinvention, in connection, in empowering each other, and helping to shine a light as we all figure out this reinvention thing. I want to invite you to join me on social media where I share all kinds of inspiration. Come follow me on Instagram, Reinvention Rebels, on Twitter, Rebels Reinvent, and on Facebook, Reinvention Rebels. Let's get inspired together. that's such a great approach to thinking about our lives. Instead of here's everything that's wrong with my life. Here's an opportunity for me to enrich my life, to grow from these experiences, to see them as a catalyst. Yes. To step into who I want to be. And, and, you know, I'm so excited to read the book. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I've read, I've heard you talk about it. I've read some of your excerpts on when you were sharing them yeah. on social media and I've heard yeah. you talk about it on other podcasts and it's so powerful, Jill. It just, Thank you. you know, being so open and vulnerable, I think it gives other people permission to do that. It helps Absolutely. us see, and that's really powerful. So I'm so excited oh, to read you. this. Yeah, Arlene Walker. Um, I, just, I, I love Arlene. She's just so fabulous. Too. And she gave me probably one of the biggest compliments I've ever been given. And I, I think I about cried when I read it. She was talking about her two favorite books of the year of 2022 so far. And she said, Will Smith and Jill Carlisle. And I was just like, <gasps> Arlene Walker, oh I can't gosh. believe you said that. I was so blown away. So blown away. I just... I just couldn't believe because she's such an amazing woman. <laughs> yeah, she is. She really is. And so for those of you that don't know Arlene, Arlene Walker is a really amazing woman. She lives in California. I interviewed her in season two of the Reinvention Rebels podcast. I'll even, you know, put that in the show notes so you, you can find it. It was such a great interview, but she wrote her first book at, at 62. Yes. Became a published author for the first time. And you know, really speaks to how, again, just like you, like anything is possible, right? Right. When we decide, when we declare that I can do this, when we believe and trust, there's nothing we can't do. Nothing. That's right. Nothing. So, you know, I just, again, going back to like the tribe, the tribe that we've been building on, on, on social media has been so great. Yeah. Just amazing. And it, it just makes me so happy to think about like, oh my gosh, I have all these, these, you know, friends, like Mm -hmm. people that I truly would call my friends. Like if I lived near you, I would be like, girl, let's get together. Exactly. Right. I'm like, exactly. Man, not just a friend on social media, but like, I would actually like, we would, I would be like, yes, Jill. I know we would be, we would be hanging out. I I told my husband, I said, I need to have an IG retreat with some of these girlfriends of mine. (laughs) I am telling you. Wouldn't that be a great idea? It is a great idea and I am all in and I think it would be just fabulous. It would be. Just like so, there's just so many possibilities there. Mm -hmm. As you think about the lessons in everything that you've done and these powerful lessons that have come up and so much of it to me is, you know, the trust, the getting quiet, the listening, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. As you reflect on your journey, not only what's been most surprising, but what would you say has brought you the most joy? I would say um, finding inner peace. And I know I probably said that earlier, but I don't think I can say it enough because of the tumultuous life that I had when I was younger and even in my early adulthood. Finding my inner peace through this reinventing journey has really brought me the most joy, number one. Number two, the other thing that's brought me joy, and it's probably equal to number one, are the people, the people who are reading my book and my story and their lives are now changing and they're encouraged they're making moves to reinvent themselves. And I've had several women, surprisingly men as well, reach out to me and say, you know, I did this, this, and this after I read your book. Um, I have a friend, um, he's turning 50 and he, he went through a really rough time in his life and had to totally reset. And, um, he, just got his personal training certification and he's starting a new career and he sent me a a DM and he said, your book was the reason I went and did that because I knew if you did it, I could do it too. And so I think it's those stories that blow me away. They blow me. They, I, 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 I'm in tears every time I read something like that. It blows me away. So powerful. It is powerful. People are powerful. Humanity is powerful. And when we lean into each other and we share our stories and we inspire, one story will inspire another story will inspire another story because it's really about paying it forward or moving it forward or however, inspiring it forward, however you want to say it. Inspiring it forward. I love that. You joy spreader, you. (laughs) <laughs> and it's amazing because I think that sometimes we sell ourselves short, especially women, and feel like maybe we, you know, we can't make a difference yet. Any of us can make a difference in a multitude of ways. And it can be the littlest things because we okay. never know when we share our story or we share the story of someone else, as I'm sharing like the stories of all, all of you amazing reinvention rebels how we never know how that will touch someone. And to your yeah. point about how we sometimes play it small, like, oh, it's no big deal, mm-hmm. whatever. But yeah, it is a big deal. It is a big deal when we have a transformation and then we tell the world about our transformation and we lean in authentically to to share that story in a way that, that people connect to it. Because that's what happened, right? People right. have that response to your story because it's compelling and you're real and you're a truth teller about your own life. And I think that it inspires other people to say, oh, if, if Jill can do that, mm-hmm. my story is different, but I, I can take that same concept of being true to myself, right. getting real with myself, and I can change in a way that will give me more inner peace. Exactly. And, you know, there there are there is power in numbers, right? And when we stand in solidarity with one another, um, that's when work gets done. Not only work internally, but externally as well. That's when work gets done. That's when that's when change is made. When we, like you said, lean into each other and we stand together. Really such a powerful thing. And I think because we live in a divided world now, mm-hmm. even within our families sometimes, oh, yes. or, right? In so many different ways that I think people are seeking. I think there's a lot of people that are seeking this deeper connection. Absolutely. That's what I have found. Really, people are searching it out. They're they're craving it. You know, we're coming out of uh, we're coming out of isolation. We're we're taking literally taking our masks off, right? We're 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 able to see each other's faces and expressions again, and we don't feel so alone. But for for the last two and a half years, even longer, we had some, we've we've felt pretty lonely, pretty excluded. 
Yeah. So, and I think for many of us, it's try, trying to figure out, well, like, what is, what does my life even mean now? Like, it's so, right. it's different, right? We're it's coming back different. into a different world that doesn't feel the same and right. does feel uncertain, right? So I think that, you know, when we can find our tribe, when we can mm. find community in whatever way that shows up, whether it's physically or it's online or in our families or our friend families, you know, right. I think that we can create family, the sense of connection and family with people that aren't even our family. Right. Because we can choose our friends, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I just think that there's, there's like endless possibilities. And Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Well, you know, the thing is, I think women spend a lot of time apologizing. Mm. I think it's something that we grow up doing, it becomes almost second nature. And not to say every woman is always apologizing for something, not like that. Mm. But I think in just sometimes even subtle ways, I might stop and notice that I've done that or notice that other people are doing that. Oh, and, yeah. Right. And I think it's a habit we fall into often unconsciously, Yeah, but we're apologizing for no good reason and, you know, un completely unnecessarily. And I think that can translate for us in midlife into women sometimes apologizing for having dreams or wanting to make their dreams a priority or, or, you know, not feeling confident as you did when you said, I, I just have a knowing, I know this is right for me. You had that certainty and that trust. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for women who are thinking about their dreams and want to become more unapologetic in pursuing them in whatever way that manifests. What advice would you share with someone who might be a little bit in that apologetic camp, but want, but sees something different and wants to move into this, you know, better empowered place? place. Yes. yes. Well, I was not always this way. I spent most of my life apologizing for everything over and over again. Um, it was really a hard thing for me to overcome. And I had to, I had to, I, it, mindset, mindset was the biggest thing for me. Um, because our mind, like we talked a little bit earlier, our mind controls us. Our mind it is such a powerful thing. And what I did was I really, I, I had to, I had to cut ties with toxicity. I had to cut ties with toxic people, whether they were my family or whether they were some old friends that were bringing old habits into my life. It's not an easy thing to do, but I had to do it because I had to get to a place where I could just do the dang thing. You know what I mean? I do. And so I had to sit back. So here's what I do. I journal. I spend time by myself in the morning in my little home gym or just create a space of your own. If it's in a chair, if it's sitting at the kitchen table, Wherever that place is, if it's in your closet, wherever it is, take a journal, take some, some affirmations. You can Google them on, on your computer. You can buy affirmation cards and write down the things you're grateful for, write down the things that you dream about and write down how you think you might go about doing it. And spending time with myself in the early morning hours, um, even sometimes at night before I went to bed, just sitting, really, literally sitting inside of myself, which honestly, Wendy, that's such a great, it sounds so great, right? But it, it's really, it's a hard thing to do. I really had to make myself do it. So I would love to be able to say this is so easy to do, but there's a lot of work behind it and you have to be willing to put in the work. So my advice would be put in the work for yourself. Step away as you can from the toxic 
people and noises in your life and shift your mindset. And as hard as it is to put yourself first, you've got to come to a point where you put yourself first. That you said it so perfectly that you have to put yourself first, that you have to decide, I am a priority. I am a priority. And the journaling really helped me, Wendy, because it was a place where I could go and I could sit and I could actually say, I had a bad day today. I'm feeling really bad about this, this, and this, but here's how I'm going to fix that tomorrow. So for me, it was acknowledging my feelings not covering them up, kind of putting them on the page, taking them to the page, acknowledging them, and then shifting my mindset and trying to find a way that I could make things better the next day. And again, it's not easy, but it's worth the work. And and that's such a great way you put that because it is work. It is work to, to, to work on ourselves. It, and it's scary sometimes to work on ourselves. Yes. Right. To uncover the things that maybe we don't like about ourselves or about our life in some way, as you have spent all this time doing, right? The realization, for example, that this person isn't good for me in my life. Right. And I need to detach from them. That's hard. That is hard stuff. This is not like, oh, okay, checking it off a list. This is... It's tough. It's, you know, I won't go into the whole story because we probably don't have time, but I had to make, I had to make that decision with a couple people and... I had to make it with my sister that we, you know, a sister that I was estranged from for many years and then reunited and the reuniting with my sister was toxic. Mm-hmm. And I even write about it in my book. It's like, we are sisters by blood, by DNA, but we cannot have a relationship. It's not good for her and it's not good for me. And it's hard stuff to, to come to that point And there's a lot of guilt that you that's that you sit with there. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's what's right for you. Because if you don't do what's right for you, then everything else that fingers out from that becomes toxic as well. Exactly. Exactly. And that's just real talk. Like that's not, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to like sugarcoat this. You know, I want, you know, it's 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 hard, but sometimes we have to make those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that when we do, we can feel empowered when it comes to, we're talking about empowerment, self-empowerment and how we can step into who we're meant to be, Mm -hmm. whatever that is. And I think that those things, even though they're very hard, can help us on that path. Yes. You know, I also think that what you said about the mornings, like this is what I do too. And it's interesting because my most recent guest, Franzi, who is amazing as a mental fitness coach. Yeah. I love, right. We all need to to develop that mental part. Like we do a physical fitness all the time. Like, okay, right. I'm going to work out. Yeah. What about, you know, our, our brain health and our mental, you know, how can we work on our mental fitness? So I love what she said. It was sort of that same idea. The morning time is my time. Yeah. I get up really early, like 445, which is incredibly early. Part yeah. of it is, you know, to work on the podcast, but also I start off, the first thing I do though, I get quiet. Yeah. I meditate. I really just tune into me. And that is the most powerful thing I can do to start my day. Mm-hmm. Just a priority though. But that it is like the tone. It sets the tone. It sets the tone. So that mindset you talk about, having that, you know, forward looking mindset. And you know, yeah. obviously some days aren't perfect. Some days aren't great. Some days we're like, ah, oh, well, that didn't go well as you mentioned, but that's okay. We can never yeah. reset. Yes. It's just life. That's right. Right. So I, I, I'm just like so excited about this. And I do want to ask you as we're starting to wrap up, was there anything else that you would like to share about the women or, and men that are listening about finding our bold voice and reinventing ourselves? Well, yeah, you know, I, I don't know what more I really could say about that, except for we are all very special in our own way. And as cliche as that might sound, 
And as hard as it is to really kind of believe that about ourselves, because right, we're told no, that we're told not to believe those things about ourselves because then it becomes a little self, you know, whatever. But I, I think that women finding, I think it's really important. You know, my my focus is on women. I'm I'm. I feel very blessed that I've had a couple men come to me and say, listen, it's changed my life. But my focus really is a lot is on women and women finding their voice, because I think that our voices have been so oppressed for so long. And I just want to encourage women and the men that are listening that need this too. But women, you know, women find, find your strength within yourself. And don't give up. And again, get to the starting line because from there, the possibilities are endless. Find your tribe, even if it's only one person. One person is a tribe because one person and one person make two, right? And surround yourself with people that lift you up and empower you. Because I find that we can't, as much as we can go in and, and try to write in the morning and shift our mindset and find things that work, when we can lean in with somebody else and find that camaraderie and find that strength and that intersection with that other person, I think that that is also very helpful in empowering ourselves. It just it just gives us some additional courage to kind of, you know, um, to, to feel good about who we are. Find your tribe. Get rid of the toxicity and just believe in yourself. Amen, sister. Yes, yes. Find our tribe. Get rid of the toxicity and believe in ourselves. Yes. Those are such wise words. And I always think that, you know, each of us has our own unique story. So that will look different for each of us, but it doesn't matter who we are, where we are in our life, we can all do those things in our own way. Like, yes, they're actionable right? steps, yeah, right? Exactly. And I mean, and I think when we think about that in terms of taking actionable steps, it becomes more realistic. It becomes, a t- you know, it, comes, it becomes attainable. And it's when we start thinking so far ahead that things become overwhelming. And I think where we're at right now in the times that we're living in, life is so overwhelming as it is that when it comes to our health, our mental health, we've got to take small steps, actionable steps that are actually attainable because those attainable, actionable steps, they, 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 they empower, they empower you. They empower us. Yeah, they really do. And it makes such a huge difference. It does. I know that people who are listening are thinking, where can I find out about Jill's book? How can I become part of Jill's tribe on social media? Where can I find this amazing woman? So where can people find you, Jill Carlisle? Well, um, you can find me I, on my website um, at jillcarlislewrites.com. Um, you can purchase my books direct directly on my website. Or you can find my books on Amazon um, under Finding 50. Um, Just search that. Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, Bookshop. It's available online everywhere, basically. Um, IG is, uh, Instagram is Jill Carlisle Writes. And um, Facebook, Jill Carlisle. I love it. I love it. And this is all in the show notes. So if you're driving and you can't just pull over and write these things down, not to worry, but you can go right to the show notes and, and we've got links so you can easily find Jill and soak up more of her beauty, brilliance, wisdom, heart, grace, Wendy, all those things. I I can't tell you Well, I can tell you, and I am. (laughs) What a joy and pleasure it is to have this conversation, to talk about your journey, to share the things that you've gone through to reinvent yourself and now to see what you have 
done and accomplished is so fabulous and truly inspiring. I'm like, you know, it's one of those things like if Jill can do it, I can do it too. I can do my own version of what Jill did, right? On my own terms. <laughs> and I, I think that that's what this is about. So I, I am just so deeply grateful to you for sharing all of this with us and helping us get inspired. Well, thank you. I mean, it really means a lot. I, I've been listening to your podcast for a while. And so when you asked me to be a guest, I jumped, I didn't have to think twice. It's just been a great honor to talk to you and to be here. Um, so thank you, Wendy. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. And I know, Jill, that one day, we're going to meet in person. <laughs> oh, girl. Yes, ma'am. You know I it. I cannot wait for the day when I, I know. give Jill Carlisle a big hug and hang out and, you know, talk about life. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to look forward to that. So thank you. Thank you, wonderful friend. Thank you. Wow. I love Jill. She is amazing. I am grateful and honored that I get to be in conversation with the most extraordinary women 50 and above that are doing awesome things to reinvent themselves. And as they reinvent themselves, they are leading us. They're inspiring us. They are showing what's possible. Your story may not be Jill's story. You have your own story, but you can see that if Jill can reinvent herself in the many ways she has done. You can have your own version of your reinvention, whatever your story is and whatever you want to create. If you are loving this podcast, pop over to reinventionrebels.com, sign up for my news and notes. I have regular inspiration I share. I'd love to have you join our community and let's get inspired together. Until next time, keep shining your amazing light in the world. The world needs you and all that you have to offer. Hey Rebel, if this episode inspired you to think about what's possible in your life, I'll share a little secret. Any of us can reinvent ourselves no matter where we are in our lives, any age, any stage. We just have to decide to get started. Here's a super simple way for you to get going with your reinvention dreams. Download my audio, five questions to spark your curiosity and inspire your reinvention journey. I share five key questions that will spur your thinking, help you uncover your dreams and motivate you to take action. Because if not now, when? Details in the show notes. Let's get inspired together.